Hello and welcome to LIS 675 Advanced Digital Collections. This lecture will present a brief overview of the course. I'll go over how the course will be structured, what you'll need, and how the course will be organized. First, let me say that I'm looking forward to working with you this semester. I really enjoy this course primarily because it's one of the most hands-on courses I teach and all of you will come out of it with really practical, usable knowledge that's very much real world. You'll be working with some of the same applications that are used today to build digital repositories and libraries, archives, and museums. And you'll find that the skills and knowledge you acquired in LIS 672 are absolutely essential to installing, configuring, and maintaining these applications. As with the 672 course, we'll take it step by step with clear instructions and support. So if you made it through 672, you'll make it through 675 as well. First off, a reminder that LIS 672 is a firm prerequisite for this course. You'll need pretty much everything you learned in LIS 672 in the first two weeks. So if you haven't already taken LIS 672, then you'll need to wait to take this course until you've completed the prerequisite. Now we'll get some administrative details out of the way, uh, and the first thing you should do is read the syllabus very carefully. Uh, the syllabus is a formal agreement between the instructor and the students. You're responsible for everything on it, including the policies and understanding the grading and such. The syllabus is considered draft up until the first day of class, and then it's a binding agreement. The syllabus contains tentative schedules and topics that may change during the semester depending on how the class goes. So be aware of that, uh, but policies and grading are firm once the course starts. The course is an online course conducted in the Desire to Learn course management system. The syllabus also contains contact information for the university's 24-hour technical support help desk and other student resources. Since you've already been through LIS 72, you know most of this already, but it doesn't hurt to repeat and call your attention to it. The objectives are laid out in the syllabus, including the competencies for those of you enrolled in the Master in Library and Information Science program. So I won't read this slide for you, but I do want to stress that this course is largely broken up into two components. The majority of the course, 75%, is hands-on work introduced by brief lecture and module plan, accompanied by written technical instructions, much like 672. Uh, then 25% is comprised of management case study papers and discussion that will be introduced partway through the course. The format will be similar overall to the structure of Intro to Applied Technology LIS 672. In 672, you explored the LAMP stack and the foundations of an architecture supporting digital collections. 672 is project-based. Your project was to build and configure a LAMP system. LIS 675, this course, is problem-based. You will install, configure, and manage a variety of digital repository applications built on the LAMP stack and test a digital collection of your making against each application. The problem you will solve is which application is best suited for the collection I'm building. The notion of evaluation and use is addressed both in the technical and management strands of this class. By the end of the course, you should have a good sense of what it means to evaluate technology in the context of user and stakeholder needs, and your final paper will reflect those elements. There's a required text, The Discipline of Organizing by Robert Glushko, which is available as a free download from the listed site. You may have used this text in other courses, and for us this is mainly for reference. But if you haven't looked at it before, you'll need to give it a closer read. You'll also need the VMware virtualization software. If you just took LIS 672, your license should still be good. If you took 672 in a prior year, uh, you'll need to update your license. So send me an email and I'll help uh, get you set up. You'll want the latest version, so review the install document and visit the VMware store to make sure you have it or use the check for upgrades function in the software and post into tech activity section if you have any questions. The most recent VMware doc is located in content uh, course documents. Now let's talk about how the course will lay out as the semester progresses. First, there's a calendar and schedule for the course in the course documents folder of D2L content. You should look at it and transfer any deadlines to your own calendar if you keep one. Each week a unit will open on Wednesday in content. 
Uh, and at the very least, there will be a written module plan. And most weeks, there's a link to one or more video lectures, uh, often one for the tech portion, and when do, uh, possibly one for the management portion, where there are both components. We'll work and pace as a class. Uh, and although you can read ahead in the textbooks if you like, the module plans and lectures won't open early in order to keep us together. The module plan will outline the objectives for the unit, list in detail the readings for the unit, provide links to video lectures um, or other videos and readings, uh, provide a list of discussion questions, and outline the specific list of uh, assignments that you need to complete. All assignments are to be uploaded to the D2L Dropbox. All discussion takes place in the D2L discussion sections. Uh, assignments, discussion, and quizzes are due by 11.30 p.m. Tucson time on the day listed in the schedule. Uh, so you'll have several days to complete uh, each unit. Some units span more than one week, and those are noted in the module plans and course calendar. The syllabus goes into more detail, but briefly this is how the course grading breaks down. Uh, the management discussion um, consists of uh, five case study discussion assignments for a total of 250 points, uh, 50 points per discussion. Uh, then the tech portion, 75%, consists of 20% for discussion and blog, 25% for the weekly assignments, and 30% for your final project. Um, final grading is the usual 90 to 100% as an A, 80 to 89 B, and uh, so on. Uh, as far as the technology portion, it will look pretty much like 672 did. Uh, the weekly module plan lists the readings, discussion questions, blog topics, and any configuration topics you need to address. Uh, and if you have questions or need clarification, there's an activity discussion section just like there was in 672. For the management case study discussion, your post should be somewhat more robust than you might be used to in other courses, including 672 or the tech discussion uh, portion of this course, since I want you to reflect uh, deeply on the readings. Uh, if enrollment is large, uh, I may break the class down into smaller groups for the management discussion, but I'll post more uh, information on the uh, management case study assignments later in the course. I've updated my late policies in all my classes starting spring 18 and after, um, so if you've taken course from me previously, uh, be sure to look this over. Uh, not all of my courses may have all of these components, but the policies cover things generally. Uh, the course schedule posted in content list due dates and close dates for all course components, and this um, uh, information is posted in detail in the uh, syllabus. Uh, the first unit opens on the first day of class, and we'll begin with introductions and creation of a new virtual machine just to make sure everything's running and you have your tech in order. You'll find that most of the conceptual heavy lifting was completed in um, LIS 672. Uh, in comparison, there's less technical reading in this course and more focus on the end user applications and creating digital collections. Uh, you'll also have more to read in the management uh, case studies portion of the class. However, you're going to find that all of the application installations are more complex and will require considerable attention to detail to avoid typos and configuration problems. It's also paramount that you be able to create a reliably networked virtual machine server uh, on demand. So in the next couple of weeks, you'll review some introductory material on file validation and vocabularies. Um, uh, these are both critical to the success of digital collections. Uh, the instructions for building your virtual machines may differ somewhat from the configuration used in LIS 70, 672, depending on when you completed it. So. Uh, follow the updated uh, standard installation guide instructions in the resources section uh, of the um, uh, tech assignments documents. So that should get you started. Uh, the course should open up in D2L a few days in advance of the first day of class, uh, and you should post an introduction in the discussion section provided. So again, I'm looking forward to the class and uh, working with you this semester. It's always a fun course to teach, and I learn new things every semester too. So. Thanks for watching and good luck.